This video and all of its contents, including any opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only and is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional services and consultation from a licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decisions, and those decisions are theirs. Welcome back to Find Your Alpha. Today we've got another terrific video. But unlike the most recent videos that I did that were very heavy on the emotional side, I think you're going to find this video to be one of the craziest cheating stories you're ever going to hear. And it's also very humorous. I found myself cracking up at this at various stages. Now, the poor husband in this case, I'm sure, was not cracking up. But the story is very humorous. And also adding to the humor is the woman who's telling the story, the wife here. She is not English speaking. And she had this translated into English by a friend of hers. I think, judging from the names and from some of the... Uh, the verbiage that they used, I believe they're from somewhere in Eastern Europe, maybe Bulgaria, Romania, somewhere in that area, but I could be wrong. But let's just get into the story and let me know at the end what you think of this. this the title says it all. Delusional wife gives craziest excuse ever for cheating. You can see here the original post was from June 3rd of 2019. She starts out and she says, hello crowd, and I give you thanks for this reading. First, I want to thank my dear friend Maria for the English translation of my letter posting here. I could not do this all without her. Where to begin this not-so-dream that has been worse than my life? My name is Tanya, and my love of life is Marku. We have been friends forever, nearly seven years, and have loved for over four now. This man is my dreamboat. Very kind very attraction, and has good money flow from job. He has been a worker since age of 15 and is not sorry. This is a real man that likes to work and provide for a family. He grew up near the sea, while I am from the capital city environment. We married two years after meeting and just one month after sharing first love at age of 19. So according to what she's saying there, they met at 17, were friends for two years, then they got it on, and then 30 days later, they're married. Uh, do you see a problem with that? I definitely do. She says here, my parents were okay, but his family was not a bit happy about this arrangement. They blame me for trapping him into marriage. However, I was virginal and have no children. How can anyone believe this to be trapping? I also work hard at hotel reception and appointments and have since I was 17 years. He, on the other hand, had a previous love, and I think two, but he only admits to just one other. Why they blame me for anything, I'll never know. Even with the blame and some animosity at first, they now have adopted me as family. And we were all happy with each other's company and trust. Marku and I have been in love and marriage almost four years and all are very happy. I cook and clean for him and do anything he asks me in lovemaking. I never refuse and always very happy with him as a performer and he very happy with me as a performer. He is my desire in all ways. Nothing more needed. And we'll come back to that nothing more needed as we get into this. Now, this is where complication begins or becomes into the picture, she says. I have worked with a man, Doran, since the start at the hotel. He is 32 and does maintenance and janitor work at the hotel. Doran is not a manly man like my Marku. And I have no desires or attraction for him. Let's make this all clear right now to everyone out there. No desires. Now keep that in mind also as we go through this story. Doran is just a sweet soul who has a devil wife who cheated and left him taking his son. The son who is now not his after ancestry blood test 
which exposed the affair and a different terrible man as the father. So this Doran, you know, had a terrible situation there with his wife, found out she cheated on him and found out his son is not his. So, you know, the guy obviously is very upset. Doran, who is a dear friend of not just me, but all workers at the hotel, was in deep desperation after this disgusted wife episode. He did not want to exist anymore and even take days off work, something he never does in all his 13 years at the hotel. Not one day missed until all of this mess. I was in extreme worry for my friend and worker. To give him a boost of his confidence, I started talking with him at work and insist that we meet for lunch every day, as well as other co-workers in a break room or out on the tables in the fresh air and sunlight to talk. So nothing wrong there. You know, she's trying to boost this friend of hers, co-worker, uh, his confidence after this terrible situation. So nothing out of the uh, realm there and everything is, is kosher with that. Now, Doran feels he has no more masculine character, as his bad wife took that all away from him. He feels no woman will ever want him now, which causes him great anguish. I told Doran, that's not true, not at all. I say any woman would be very lucky to have you as their man. You are kind, gentle. You are a good provider and a good father to your son which I will tell you about later, she says. Talking with Doran for these weeks gave me an idea. Now listen to this idea, folks. Where I could give him his masculine trait back and at the same moment allow me to explore a different man as I never have except with my Marku. So what she's saying here is I will sleep with this guy who's a friend of mine and a co-worker, and I'm not attracted to him, but that'll give him his manliness back, his man card back. And then at the same time, it will allow me to sleep with another man, which I've never done before. She says, this would get that forever question out of my system. I then figure when to ask my Marku about my solution and get his blessings. Now, can you even imagine a wife going to their husband and pitching this? She says, after dinner cleanup, I sit down with my Marku and have the discussion. I told him my suggestions and he laughed and smiled crazy like and said, you are funny and are kidding about all of this. I told him, no, I was not, as this is ideal solution for both Doran and me and that he has nothing to worry about with Doran as I have no desire or attractions for him. He was most angry and stormed away and shut the door on the bedroom, but didn't lock the door. Since he didn't lock, I knew what he wanted. So to show my love, I removed all clothing and walked into the bedroom. He can never resist me just as I cannot resist him, even after four long years. I gave him everything he loves and we fell asleep with each other in love and happy as we always are. So apparently she knows to use her body anytime that there's a disagreement and she needs to smooth things over. I let a day go by, but then asked my Marku if, I th if he thought about my good suggestion. So she's asking him again after he objected and would give blessing. And again, he said he would not. And then if I did this, he would divorce and he would have no speaking or friendliness to me. So he's telling her right there, if you do this, I'll divorce you and I will not speak to you. I said, okay, and sat beside him watching a video movie. And then I just gave him his treat. And you can imagine what his treat is. And we spent the night on the couch in love with each other all the way that night, all night. So again, she's using her body to smooth things over with him and he's going along with it. I noticed during this time that away from our love session time or eating my delicious meals, and she has a smiley face there, my Mark who is distant and preoccupying with another matter, talking on the phone outside of the apartment house 
or talking low in the spare room. My antenna are up, but nothing was obvious. Days go by, and it was now Sunday, and after holy services, Marco was going to drive to the sea to spend four days with his family, and he and his father and brother were going to do fishing. They did every year at this time, which I have no problem for. He is a man and needs his man time with men to retain masculine traits and strengths, she says. Before he left for his drive, here she goes again. I again ask him about my good suggestion. She's not letting this go. He was in very frustration again, but this time said, Tanya, you are a grown woman and I cannot force you on any matters. If you want to sleep with another man, I can't stop you. I've already told you about all of my feelings on this. I hugged and kissed him and thanked him for his understanding. He just looked at me odd, got in and drove away. Before he left, he said to remember deeply what he told me. I said I loved him and kept sending him love messages and body texts that night. So the body texts I think she's sending him are nudes. I'm just guessing. The next day at lunch, so she took that as like a default yes that he gave her the green light to do this because listen to this, the next day at lunch, I meet with Doran and told him about my suggestion. He was in a state of shock, didn't see this coming at all. He told me, no, no, he could not have a relation with a married woman. I told him my husband doesn't agree, but said I could do this if it's what I wanted and I wanted, so this is where we are. Doran thought about my suggestion Monday night and didn't sleep. And when we met on Tuesday, he said he would do it if my husband was okay and I was okay and there would be no love, only the very act. And I said, yes, as I have no desires for him at all. None at all. He is nice. He is, uh, he is nice man and all, but not desirable or attractive at all. Not at all, she says. So Tuesday night, I go to Doran's home. It is a nice little place and we have the session with latex, I might add, and no kissing or lips of any kind, only some touching and then the act itself. I think it did the job for Doran as he was quickly satisfied. For me, it was just getting this question out of my system. Not a memorable session at all and it meant nothing to me other than checking off a box. So you can see she went through with having S with this coworker, and uh, she's feeling like, hey, okay, I checked the box. Now things are back to normal. So that night she sends a text to her beloved Marku and told him it was all done successfully and that Doran's manhood was restored. And I have gotten my question resolved and now I will never be with another man, but only you, my love Marku. Now, can you imagine being this Marku, her husband, and getting this text after he already told her that if she does this, he's going to divorce her. He must be thinking, oh my God, what did I get into here? Who did I marry? Now remember, she says, this was a session with latex and no kissing or love, just the act. So it wasn't lovemaking as with my Marku. So let me get this straight for everyone out there. And as you'll see as we go through this story, she gets into back and forth with people who have responded, I guess, to her previous post. I guess she just got lambasted. And I can see why, and I'm sure you can see why, when she posted this. And she has this real animosity now with people who are responding to her and not understanding what she did in her delusional mind. I was worried of Marku's responses, so I text him instead of calling. He did not text back that night. I didn't sleep at all with worry. The next morning, thank God, he texted saying he would be home on Saturday instead of Friday. Okay, I don't like him being away for two days more, but at least he is understanding about my suggested act that was done and I have my man's love. Well, you think you have your uh, man's love and understanding. You're going to find out you don't. The next day, Doran and I had lunch, and he thanked me for the session and for returning his manhood. 
he has the confidence to move forward now. He also got word from the court that he had 50% custody of his boy, even though he is not the blood father. I celebrated with him and told him from now on, we would not meet together one by one for lunch or other get togethers now that we did our session and he was restored. He gave me thanks, understood and said, no worries. He was not a cheating person. Throughout this time, I'm sending my Mark who love text and body pictures of me. He does not have good service on the boat. So he only texts back when he can, he, when he can, but only thing he texts back is that he looks forward to seeing me, seeing the look on my face on Saturday. I am filled with anticipation and love at the thought of having my man back with me. Well, this is all a dirty trick amongst all dirty tricks, she says, and a true heartbreak. On Friday, when I come home from work, from a hard day of work and an hour of shopping for my Marku's favorite foods, I come home to find my apartment empty and divorce papers sitting on the counter with a note saying, I thank you and wish you good luck and success with Doran. Signed by my loving husband, Marku. I burst with absolute tears and know this is not his thinking, but that of his family. They never liked me. Marku would never do such a thing. He took all the furniture and all the silverware, cups, glasses, and linings, linens, except for one set. He took our king bed and replaced it with a small twin bed, which I believe once belonged to his young nephew, <laughs> and left me a small TV and chair. That's it. He took all the kitchen appliances, but left me with a saucepan, a frying pan, and bought me paper plates, plastic silverware, paper cups, and left toilet paper and paper towels. My only possessions were my clothes, toiletry items, and makeup. I tried calling Marku, but I was blocked. I called his mom and sister, and they had me blocked. So did his dad and brother. Marku was apparently talking to attorney all those times when he was outside or in the spare room. He must have started this process right after I told him of my good suggestion. What a dirty trick, she says. Can't believe it. Next, I read the letter inside the divorce agreement, which said to direct all correspondence and conversation to attorney. No direct contact with my husband. And she has in parentheses here, tears, 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 and a frowny face. I called the attorney at the end of the day and asked him, what is going on? And how am I going to live? I can't pay for this apartment house on my own. He said that Marku has paid for the lease payment which includes basic utilities through the remainder of the three months of, on our lease. I will need to determine to keep video service, internet, and cell phone, as that's on me. He said next, Marco terminated lease at expiration, so if I want to stay, I need to renew at the term with landlord. I ask you all, how am I going to stay when I can't afford? Is this how a man treats a love of life? and a woman who gave him everything, love makings of all kinds, cooking, cleaning, all shopping, errands. Marku just had to ask and he got it, whatever he want, and now I'll be on the street treated just like a pack dog, she says. I'm in tears with sorrow and torment. I couldn't sleep the night and went the next day to Marku's job site. They informed me that he was working a job on the shore now and would be working that territory at his request. He does concrete work, all kinds, and is very much one of the best for such a young man. I asked the foreman to tell, me, to tell him I was there and that I love him, and he said he would do so. I have grief, unbelievable, just like a death and loss. I can't take it. I talked to my friend and coworker about all of this, and she can't believe what I did. What, she says? She is the one who gave me the idea for the suggestion. When I asked her about this, she said, yes, I told you this, but never thought you would do it. It was all just crazy girl talk. So this coworker of hers, they were just, you know, talking in the break room or whatever, and 
she came up with this crazy idea and she just took it like, hey, we're kidding around. I'm just kind of kidding you. Never thinking that this Tanya would go through with it, but she did. The next day, I took bus to the seaport as I don't drive. I went to my in-laws home and was not welcome, but they had me come in and fix me a meal and coffee. I explained the error and misunderstanding. See, she's saying that what she did is an error and a misunderstanding and how I love Marku only and forever. They were nice, but Marku's mom told me that he does not want to see me again and it would be best to never contact him. I told her I cannot do that as he is my only world. Marku was working 100 kilometers away and they did not welcome me to stay with them so I had to return home on the bus to an empty apartment. I cried the whole time and continued crying all night and had to take time from work to collect my bearings that day. Now I need your help to my question. How do I win back my husband and his love from this misunderstanding? Don't tell me how bad I am as that is your opinions and I heard all that on another post I did but got no good suggestions and actions. All I want is good actions to take to win back my man and love of life as I can't go on like this. Please, your help is welcome. So she's reaching out to the community. And again, this is from three plus years ago. So now we're going to find out because she has several updates. What happened next? Here's an update from June 8th. So just a few days later of 2019. And what she's doing here is answering some questions or comments that she got from people who responded to her. And again, she just got lambasted with negative posts and negative responses. So these are her comebacks to the people who have responded to her. The first one, she says, yes, I believe in God and the vows of marriage. Do you? The second one, she says, no, I was not cheating on my loving husband and would never do such a thing. You must be a cheater yourself for asking this question. Next, she says, yes, I do believe I am a goodest girl. How many women do you know at 24 years that have really only been with one man and had just one other latex session? She, she keeps emphasizing that this session that she had with this Doran was with condoms, you know, like that makes a difference. She says, I can answer that, none, unless they are a nun. Next, she says, no, I will not have any type of relationship with Doran again, other than coworker, no attraction, no desire. What I did for him was out of the depths of my heart. I saved this man, and I am proud to say that. God will judge me and not any of you. Next, she says, no, I will not be with another man ever again. Why don't you ask this of your girlfriend or wife? Why? Because you do not want the answers of truth. Next, she says, no, I did not emasculate and disrespect my Marku. You have not seen my man, and as such, you cannot judge his masculinity. I know and bet he is more of a man than anyone on here. She then says, no, I have not told my parents or other family members about all of this, but I can tell you they would be very proud of their daughter for doing right, for doing right, selfless things to help people. So she's really painting this picture like, oh, she did this all for this Doran. You know, he was, you know, not wanting to exist anymore. He felt totally emasculated. So she did this out of the goodness of her heart. She slept with him and returned him to wanting to live and returned him to his manhood. And then the final thing here, she says, no, I am not interested in latex sessions with other loser men in this peanuts gallery. She says, most of you are bitter incels. And if you don't know what incels are, those are men that are involuntary celibate. They want to be with a woman, but for whatever reason, they can't. Now, here's a second update, which is a month later. She says, well, I need to update and it's not a pretty sight. 
I have been without my man for one full month and I'm heartless and empty. I have tried everything to reach him, but he is no reply. I have even called him from other people's phones and left messages on his phone, but he is screening calls and has never called me back, even though I poured my heart out to him. Now listen to what she does here. She says, I even had Doran, the guy she slept with, call Marku and leave him a message, thanking him for his manliness and for saving his life of misery. In message, Doran told Marku he is grateful to him as a great man and will forever be in his debt for his act and that there is no love or interest in me and Tanya. We are just work employees. Marku has never responded. Now, I can't imagine what went through her mind, you know, having this Doran call and for this Doran actually to call him. Wow, unbelievable. I told my parents and brother about my divorce and they are very much angry with me. Now, just before when she was going back and forth with people who were responding to her, she said, no, she hadn't told her parents, but they would be very proud of her. Well, obviously they're not. She said that was not the responses I expected from my parents. She thought that they were going to, you know, say, oh, you did a good thing. You're a great daughter. They can't see the good deed I did. Only the cheating. I cannot convince them this was not cheating, but a selfless act. I have no interest in Doran. He cannot hold a candle to Marku. They still don't believe me and have much disgust to me. Say I should go to confession every day for the next year. Why do this for one act that helped a fellow man? I will let God judge me in the end and not people on earth, including my family. So she's going down swinging with this and is not relenting that what she did was just a selfless, great act that she did for someone else. Unbelievable. Now, here's the final update. This was from December 10th, so like over six months from the first posting. Okay, I wasn't about to come back to this terrible posting wall to give update, but some nice people have asked, so I will. I just wish I could block all the incel peanut gallery haters out there. Well, guess what? I'm living at our community hostel now that my lease ran out, and I have not the funds to afford such rent in the capital city. It's a nice place, but just temporary. Could live with parents, but don't want, as they are not understanding of me. So her parents really don't want anything to do with her after she screwed up her great marriage. Well, let me tell you about divorce. I am divorced now. Maybe the quickest divorce in our country's history. With my luck, probably so, but at least I have God on my side. The privilege, the judge was obviously a person of male privilege, she says, and no respect to women of today's times. So she's saying the judge is a, you know, a man of male privilege and doesn't respect the modern woman. He would not consider any, he would not consider my suggestion as anything but cheating. Had no care whatsoever for the man, Doran, who I saved the life of and made whole again, he just said, you can call it what you wish, but it is cheating and a violation of your marriage. I told him my husband gave me the permissions. He asked my husband and my husband's attorney said, no, your honorable judge, he did not. What Marco, what Marco told Tanya was, you are a grown woman and I cannot stop you from doing anything. He then went on to say that Marku had told me before that if I did such a thing, he would divorce. The judge turned to me and I talked to my legal representative who answered and said, yes, Marku told Tanya this. It is a truthful statement. The judge then asked, why then did you move forward with your affair? If you knew this, I was deer in headlights with my legal representative and we didn't respond. The judge then said, we didn't have to answer the question as it was irrelevant to the outcome. 
He then granted my Marku the divorce, which terminated the marriage. He did award me the equivalent of 6,000 euros, around 7,000 US dollars, that Marku must pay in 90 days. Can you believe all of this? 6,000 euros for four years of love makings of all kinds, cooking, cleaning, errands, taking care of this man when sick. If I just went out and worked these jobs, it would be worth over 200,000 euros. Do I think I should have gotten 200,000 euros from Marku? No, I do not. But 6,000 euros? Come on, people. Why are women not valued for their beautiful contribution to marriage? Can the peanut gallery people here answer me that question? So she's again, you know, reaching out and dinging the people in the gallery because she knows she's going to get skewered again with responses. This is my final post here, as I am not going to keep up this fight with this peanut gallery here. I am just exhausted and you are just nasty peoples. Instead, I am going to focus all of my time and attention on getting my Marku back over the next year. I left him a message on his phone stating I will not have any dates of any kind for at least one year, maybe forever, as I will be waiting on him to come back. I told him to come to my new apartment anytime he wants loving of any kind, anything, and give him my new address. I know one day I'm going to hear a knock and open the door and my dreamboat Marco will be standing there and pick me up with kisses and we will live our life happily ever after with many children and constant daily lovings. Merry Christmas to everyone out there and I send God's best wishes to you all, even those nasty people who hate me and themselves. The end. So what an amazing story this was. I mean, I found it just very humorous, crazy. I mean, it's one of the craziest stories I've ever heard from a cheater and who actually had the nerve to go out there and post looking for sympathy and looking for solutions to what she did. And even in the end, she is still defending what she did as a selfless act. It is unbelievable. But let me know what you thought about this story. Give us your comments there. I mean, what did you think of this? Do you think the husband handled it very well? I think he handled it very well because he immediately divorced her. Once he found out that she wanted to sleep with someone else, you know, if you remember from the story, he started calling an attorney right then. And that's what you should do, because once somebody brings that up, once somebody brings that up, a spouse or a girlfriend, the relationship is over and you need to start the breakup process. And if you're married, start the divorce process. And he did that. So let me know your comments. Please hit that like button because that moves this video up on the algorithm and lets more people see it. Share it with your friends and please subscribe to this great channel and I will talk to you on the next one.